Welcome to something a little bit different. Now, I'm not just talking about the new set which we have here, which we will, I promise, grow into a little bit more, but I'm actually talking about doing a one year on review of two grinders that I use almost every day. Now, you have the Wilfer Uniform. This lives in my house. I use this to make filter coffee every morning. And then you've got the Niche Zero, which has lived in the studio since I reviewed it, and I bought one to keep here uh, just to use every day. Now, I wanted to do a one year on review because I think it's a good check on my reviews. Did I catch everything the first time around or have I discovered new things a year later? Secondly, I get a lot of questions about these grinders. Am I still using them? Have I discovered anything new? Would I still recommend them? So we'll talk about each one a little bit more, go into some of the stuff that I like, some of the stuff that I don't like, how has their performance changed or not over the year, more now, that I've had them. If I had one big complaint about this grinder, it would be focused on one part and one part only, which is the scale on top of it. It is frustrating and unnecessary. Now I'm very happy to say that Wilfer do make a version of this grinder that does not have a scale in it, it just has a lid. And I'll give you an example of why I find it a bit fussy and frustrating. Let's say I wanna make a V60 in the morning. So take my scale off my grinder, tear it out, put my beans on top, weigh them out, pour the beans into here. However, from a noise and other perspective, I'm gonna put this back on again, and then I'm gonna grind it through, and then I'm gonna take my lid off again put it back down, and then I'm gonna put my coffee on top, my V60, all of that stuff, and I'm gonna brew, uh, and then when I'm done, it's back on again. I get that maybe it's a convenient place to store your scale, you're not putting it in a kitchen drawer, it's not out or anything like that, but honestly, I just want a lid. I just want a lid and a regular scale, and I, I wanna leave the scale where it is, I wanna leave the lid where it is, and just open it up, put beans in, close it, get on with my day. The scale isn't a great scale. I think I flagged this in the review the first time around. The lag is definitely a bit of a frustration. If you're trying to dose quite accurately, you'll often overshoot. And the little rubber protection mat, gotta say, it's, it's not that useful. I understand protection is good. You can't put something like a clever dripper on top of here because it's all wonky and it kind of sits funny and that's just, frustrating. And while it is the biggest gripe, like I said, they do a version that's cheaper that just has a lid and not a scale. So if you're thinking about this grinder at the end of this, then I would probably recommend that one over this model. I will say the black paint on this hasn't been fantastic. You can see here at the bottom where the ground catcher goes in, some chipping. I've managed to scratch it off here a little bit. On the bottom of the grounds bin, you can see just what the friction has rubbed the paint off. So I don't really care about that, but if you do, then I might not recommend the all matte black version for you. Actually, while I have the grounds catcher bin, I was a bit concerned when I first got this that, that static would be an issue. What I tend to do is grind, leave it in there for 10, 15 seconds, uh, then give it a good shake before I dispense, and then I don't really have static issues. I will still occasionally put a little droplet of water in amongst the coffee. Uh, there's a little hack video up here if you wanna know about that. If you don't know about that, great little tip if static is a problem for you. So those are some grumbles, some complaints, but I'm using it every day, so there must be things I like, and yeah, there really are. I like the coffee it makes. It's got a good size set of flat burrs in here, and I like the coffee it makes. I'm only using this to make filter coffee in the morning. I do not make espresso at home. I don't have an espresso machine at home. I don't have space, I don't have time. I frankly don't have the inclination for that to be part of my early morning routine. I just wanna make a nice cup of filter coffee, and this does a great job at that. It does grind for espresso, but we'll all talk about that a little bit more in a second. Last bonus feature, thing that I do like, works really well for me, is that this does have an auto shut off. So you put your coffee beans in, turn it on, when it's finished grinding, within a few seconds, and it's not always perfect, but it will always shut itself off for you. But now, let's talk about the niche. So this has lived in the studio and it's appeared in a lot of videos because it's been a great little grinder to have around that I can use for filter coffee that I can use really easily for espresso. So the niche is a more expensive grinder. It's 500 pounds, which is nearly 200 pounds more expensive than this one here. And what do you get for your extra money? Well, you get a very capable espresso grinder. Really, this is a very easy to use single dose grinder. It's intuitive, it's simple, and it actually has very little in the way of waste or attention. Those are things that make it super easy to dial in, super efficient and great for studio usage or just for home espresso usage. It's not perfect, nothing's perfect. And I'll tell you right now that weirdly, I kind of miss the auto off function from this in this. So I'll often put coffee in, start it grinding, go and do something else because I try and multitask in my life when it comes to making coffee and, and then sort of wonder what that funny noise in the background is and why is it still going and it, I have to go and switch it off. That's a tiny gripe. 
I have since added to this the uh, NPD, the, the, the disc. You might have seen that in some videos. That's to prevent popcorning from the grinder. It works really well. It actually slows down the grinder in terms of its feed. Now I think that actually improves grind quality and there's a little video up here if you want to watch it uh, about that whole thing. The build of this has felt solid, sturdy. The paint job has been wonderful. I have no complaints. I have not been necessarily very kind to this grinder. It's been in and out of backpacks. There is a function on here that I talked about which is the calibration function. I understand that is potentially useful. I've never found it really super useful for me because I'm never quite sure when I'm actually all the very way at the end. And when I do go all the way to the end, that calibration definitely doesn't line up with anything on here, which makes me feel like I've done something a little bit wrong and maybe I've over tightened it for that calibration moment. So I don't worry about it too much. Generally, the way I have it set up, most of my espresso happens between 20 and 30. I do still love the little dosing cup. It's great for dosing into a portafilter on the condition that it's a 58 mil portafilter. I think they do make some smaller dosing cups for smaller portafilters, but for dosing into a V60, for dosing into anything, been really useful. And I get comments on almost every video asking what is this, where can I buy it? It's part of the niche and I don't think they sell them separately, though they probably could and maybe should, but maybe it's just one of the perks of getting their grinders. In terms of last complaints before we make some coffee, I, I do wish that this had a bigger sort of funnel section here that held more coffee. I'm often grinding larger doses for stuff here, for little experiments where I might want to grind more than 30 or 40 grams, uh, and very quickly this thing gets overwhelmed. The capacity here is much, much larger. The conical burrs in here are great for espresso. They work really well. I do like flat burrs for espresso, but I, I have no complaints about the quality of grind I'm getting from this. Some people have concerns about the taste of conical burrs at coarser grind settings for things like V60s, but for me, I certainly haven't felt like I'm compromising on the transparency of flavor of the coffees that I'm brewing. So, let's make some coffee, and we'll start by just brewing a couple of V60s side by side with very similar grind settings from each one, and let's see how they taste. So I've got a V60, got a couple of papers, got some coffee, useful. This is a moment where these two grinders can work together, actually, so I can uh, I can weigh on this into into this. How convenient. So I'll brew a 15 to 250 in each one of these. Into you, and 15.3 into you. For the sake of interest, let's have a race. These are at the same grind setting. There we go. We'll start with the Wilfer. Now you can see I'm brewing on the scales as desired, but the, the placement in order to see the screen isn't great. You end up with this sort of hanging off the back. The fact that this has no timer built in, you'd have to use a phone, very frustrating that it's really just a scale. So all done, we need to just reset. We'll pour out a cup full. So just while these cups of coffee are cooling down, I do want to do a very quick sound level test. I'm going to grind each of them. I've got a decibel meter on my phone. It's not perfect, but it'll give us a good idea of if one is much louder than the other. So almost identical. No real difference, though the tone of it may be a personal preference. One of them may bother your ears more than the other. We've got a decent mic running, so you should have a pretty good idea of how they sound. So now time for the taste test. These are, on paper, identical extractions, identical strengths, the same coffee in, the same water in. They're the same brew. So any differences really are down to the grind profile. Uh, and let's see what they taste like. Tasty, fully extracted, rich. Sweet, clean, definitely a, a noticeable difference between the two. Now you'll already be thinking this isn't good science, this should be blind, and I, I would agree. But if I can't taste huge differences here, then they probably aren't really there. And I will say the difference between them is present, but not enormous. These are matching extractions. The, the Wilfer tastes a little bit uh, cleaner. It's a little bit more linear in a way. It's not got the texture as a cup of, of the niche, which is interesting because they're the same strength, but it doesn't quite have the same texture. It is a touch sweeter for me. Uh, I think they're both 
very delicious cups of coffee. Without the AB test, I certainly wouldn't be having any FOMO about other grinders or about the other grinder. You do have a, a kind of fuzzier cup profile here. It's sweet, it's got nice texture, but it does not quite have the same clarity of flavor as this cup here. This is just that fraction sweeter, fraction more clarity, but both are good. But in this case, I would award the kind of win from a flavor perspective to the Wilfer. Before we dial in some espresso, there's something else I want to talk about, and that is the world's largest coffee tasting. October 3rd, we will be streaming a tasting and you can buy a kit. And if you really can't afford to get involved, click down below, enter the competition. I'll pick 50 people anywhere in the world that we can send kits to, uh, and I'll send some kits. And I can do that because this video has an ad for Squarespace. Now, when it was time to build a website for the world's largest coffee tasting at worldslargestcoffeetasting.com, I immediately just went to Squarespace. I knew that very quickly, very easily, I could take a template from their gallery and I could begin to customize it. And it's so easy to do. I took my photos, I took my words, my information, and I built a website. I can leave this website up for years. Every time we do a tasting, I can add to it, but there's nothing to patch, upgrade, install, or worry about. I love that part of Squarespace, knowing that my site will look great on every browser, every device. I don't have to garden it. I don't have to look after it. It's gonna look after itself. Don't take my word for it. Click the link below, sign up for a free trial. Give it a go, build something beautiful. And don't forget, when it's time to launch, use code James Hoffman for 10% off any website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So let's talk about espresso. Quick set change, got an espresso machine here, moved things around, so should make life a little bit easier. So both grinders are preloaded with 18 and a half grams. I'll start with the Wilfer. Now, I will say that I would probably recommend using like a dosing funnel to help dose into a portafilter from this. It's not very easy. You get a lot, a lot of cling at fine grinds to the inside and you find yourself tapping and shaking and working very hard to try and get the grounds out. But let's pull the shot. It is a good looking shot, filled in really nicely. No real signs of channeling. So that is exactly on spec. It's 39.2 grams out in 33 seconds in that window that I described at the start. So let's get on with the niche. As a dosing experience, this is very different. And we're done. Beautiful, painless, easy. I'll distribute this a little bit more. Uh, I'm testing a tool at the moment that'll be up in another video. But as a starting point, that's quick, that's easy. There's nothing retained inside the little dosing cup. Again, very nice start to the shot. Everything looks nice and even. Another 33 second shot. Let's give them a quick stir. Neither had obvious defects in terms of channeling or any issues like that. Though they both did speed up a little bit towards the back end of the shot. Okay. Now what I'll, I'll say is that the difference in espresso is present, but it's not so big that it would be a deciding factor in which one of these grinders I might pick to make espresso. The Wilfer has a bit more acidity in the cup, but it is a, a pleasant acidity. There is a little bit of acidity in here that's not quite as nice, but both feel very sweet. Now it's a pretty light roast coffee, so I'd expect some acidity. The texture on the niche is superior. Like it feels really nice. It's got lovely kind of silky, very pleasant, soft kind of mouthfeel. Really very enjoyable as an espresso. There's probably a touch more clarity again in the Wilfer, but how you feel about the acidity that goes with it may be a thing. Now, you could argue that this isn't necessarily a fair test and that what I should have done is really just dial in the Wilfer to get the absolute best possible shot I could and then dial in the niche to, to do the same thing. For me, I was just interested in the kind of shots they produce if they are aiming for the same kind of recipe. That would give me some insight into their burr set and that kind of stuff. What I will say is that dialing in the Wilfer is no fun. It can pull shots, and if you occasionally need shots, great. I think if you were using this as a daily espresso grinder, you'd end up incredibly frustrating. Just getting coffee out of the dosing bin into a portafilter is not an enjoyable experience, and it, and it feels like something that it could do rather than something that it's built to do. The niche in comparison 
all round experience wise, it's just way better. And that's just getting coffee from the dosing cup into the port filter. By the time you factor in the fineness of adjustment, which in here is very fine, it's easy to make small changes. Here, these are big steps. You kind of have to get lucky and hope that you land on the right kind of grind for the profile that you want. And I got relatively lucky here, but the niche just gives you a lot more control. It's, it's a lot more accurate in the adjustments that you make. And overall for making espresso, it makes delicious espresso, but the process of making espresso is very enjoyable. So in summary, both I think are great grinders. I enjoy having both in my life. I don't want to change either of them because they fit the way that I brew coffee in the places that I brew coffee. If you just make filter coffee at home, then I think the Wilfer is a great grinder. It's easy to use. It's certainly got enough control in terms of grind settings. The auto off is a nice feature. It looks good on your kitchen surface and the coffee's great. So I would recommend it for that purpose. But if you are meaningfully brewing espresso, if you're regularly brewing espresso, then I would probably say don't buy this grinder. It's not for you. The niche I really like, and it's going nowhere. It is reliable, it's easy to use, it's easy to clean. Would I like a flat burr version of the niche? Yeah, I'd be super interested. Would I like it to have a little auto off function? Yeah, that would be convenient. But I think for the money, for 500 pounds, I'm not sure what else I would recommend that has the versatility of this and, and the kind of user experience of this and the cup quality of this. I think it's a very good grinder. And one last thing before I wrap up, it's that my company does stock the Wilfer uniform online. I'm not gonna leave a link to it in the description. I'll leave a link to Wilfer's website if you want to know more. But now I pass it off to you. Do you have either of these grinders? Have you thought about getting both like me? It seems unlikely, but maybe you have. Have you had issues that I haven't touched on? Have you had things go wrong or go right? Are you happy with your purchase? I would love to hear from you down in the comments below, but for now I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.